In today's video, we're going to make chocolate from bean to bar. Let me just say, in no way is this a tutorial video because it's all over the place. But it took us four days to make chocolate and this is basically how you make it. If you're just interested at all about us making it in Costa Rica, me and my friend, um, you know, kind of in her, in her, you know, house, then this is the video for you to watch. And just so you know, I will link below the chocolate bars that she sells and just so you know, they are made in a commercial kitchen. So if you do buy them, those are the ones you'll get. Anyway, so if you're interested, keep watching. The cacao pod looks like from the tree. And now we are going to open it. It's very beautiful. So this is very crinolated. It's wrinkly and got good contours. We call that crinolated. to do a little bit more. Maybe don't try this at home on your leg. Yeah, try on a chopping board. Don't be sit sitting on a ledge. You should bring a chopping board out. Let's do it with the chopping board. Now we're being responsible. <laughs> should be a bigger knife as well. Some people do it with a hammer, no? I mean, you can break it on the ground, but just been like at the moment the strength of my hands is low maybe I can are you filming yeah <laughs> all right I'm about to open it okay it's going to be opened yay it's open so this is quite delicious, the fruit around the pot. Okay, now, if we want to ferment it and make the beans for chocolate, we don't eat the fruit off. You, have to, you need to keep it on. Okay. I'm gonna need many, many pods to do that. But yeah, we don't. We use the fruit, the fruit's got the sugar in, which makes the fermentation happen. But this one we're just gonna eat. So it's basically a fruit or chocolate. So let's make our own chocolate. These are the beans we're gonna use. These, by the way, are Cre Criollo beans, and these are a hybrid, and these are, I already forgot the name, but these are easier to grow. These are more expensive because they're harder to grow. Anyway, so here's the beans, and we're gonna use a mix of them. We're going to use two kilos. This is one kilo of beans. A kilo is 2.2 .2 pounds, in case anyone's wondering. Go, yeah. We're making our own chocolate. It's already a process. We're gonna put our beans in the roaster. Take the beans out of the roaster and then we have to peel it off. Or I should say, dehusk de it. So there, I did it by hand. It's not that impressive, but there it is. That bean by hand. But we're gonna use this contraption to do it. Now we're gonna put the sugar in the Cuisinart because we want it to be even finer than it is to go into the chocolate. Now we're adding the coconut sugar and the vanilla that we dried, the whole bean, not vanilla extract, into the melanger. Oh, it's turned off. Gonna rotate it, it is, but I'm going to put the lid on when it rotates because I don't want to paint um. it. But what we'll do is I'll put the lid on. And now we're melting some cocoa butter. And when that melts and cools off, then we'll put that in the mixture as well. This cocoa butter is not super refined. That's why it, it has a little chocolate cacao in there as well. You can refine it even more and then it'll be white. This is the cocoa butter that we're putting into this 85% chocolate that we're making. And it's dark because it's homemade and yes. it's unfiltered. Exactly, so it's dark, like I said before, because it's homemade and unfiltered. It has to be filtered way more to be white. So, what does? so the 
this is the oil press. Here's our cacao nibs. Now we're going to add said nibs. So here is the oil press machine and the cacao nibs go on top and then the oil drops down in the bowl there and then the solids. Okay, so here's how the oil press works. We put the nibs in, the oil comes, drips down into the bowl, and then the solids come out over here, and we save them and grind them up and use them in things like brownies. There's something called conching. If you have a fancy machine, they have a button for that. But we're gonna do it with a hair dryer. By the way, it's day three. We weighed out one kilo point eighty of the chocolate. That's what's gonna go in our molds. And we're also working really hard not to waste any. We're scraping it onto this marble slab so that we'll have it. This homemade cocoa butter that was like, made to be the seed. So we have to grate it or chop it up into real little pieces and then put the right amount in to see the, the amount of silk we need. And basically it's cocoa butter that was kept at 92 degrees exactly for 24 to 48 hours. And then it's ready to be the seed to use for the silk method. So we're warming up our molds with a blow dryer so that they could be the right temperature. Okay, we're measuring the temperature with this gun and we're waiting for it to get to 94 degrees and then we're gonna add in the seed. But if tempering chocolate wasn't enough, we're also trying to get a new passport. Yay, COVID. It's happening. The passport's happening, and so is the chocolate tempering. So I'm just going to show you this bowl here. We've got the seed in here, which you can just about see. What we're going to do is we're just going to cover over the seed like this. So this is silk. This is a... Uh, chocolate that uh, cocoa butter that's been in temper that uh, okay. has to get all the rest of the crystals in the chocolate to join the party so we're going to let it rest for a second just to melt for a second we're going to let it rest for a minute actually and then we're going to start stirring like crazy people I'm going to press stop right now right so we're here making chocolate this is lauren's first time isn't it making yes. bean to bar chocolate we've um, we're, uh, very, we're on day four we're on day four and i mean this is we've not even done the growing or the ferment fermentation we started from the bean and now we're on tempering which is very time sensitive so we're going to keep a real good eye on things and you need a bowl and you need some kind of way to temper and uh, we're in a very hot and humid environment which is not good for chocolate and we're going to keep an eye on the temperature so we put the um the silk in at 94.6 it's already dropped to 93.1 and now we're gonna start stirring like crazy and then we're gonna test it on a mold in the freezer let it we're gonna keep stirring let it drop more and then pour it into our final molds we're gonna just do 85% plain chocolate bars and we're gonna pour into our final mold and we're gonna make 36 bars in this batch any questions Laura uh, no, I've been asking them all day long. So we're gonna plant a tree and we'll have another video from tree to uh, bar in like five years. <laughs> five or six. Uh, I'm gonna test right. it now. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on a, another mold, just a tiny bit, and put it in the freezer for a couple of minutes. Lauren's gonna keep stirring. Oh, but it's, a, it's in temper, we're gonna test a bit more, but we've got like, Snap. Snap. But it is oh. melting quickly. We didn't leave it very long. Mm. Mm. Oh, melting a little bit. Mm. Okay, well, that's good. Okay, we're getting ready. We're gonna pour into the molds. I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna scrape. I'm not 100% sure what that means yet, but this hopefully we'll figure it out. shouting stuff out. Okay, you might be shouting. So there's a little bit of shouty chef happening. I don't soon. even know where I'm standing. Okay, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna know when I start. <laughs> Let's move these up. So as we said, we heated the molds a bit. And this space is a little craft. I should give myself some more. Okay. 
Oh yeah, we're gonna get a bowl with a pouring spout. Yeah, this isn't the most efficient That's way. It's gonna be I in our have, future. Like, several different ways of pouring. Like I have a squeezy bottle I sometimes use. So first I'm gonna tap, then I'm gonna scrape with this and put the, and put yeah, the and excess then, in and, there. Yeah. And what's this one for? Scraping, finer scraping? Scraping the chocolate off the other mold so it doesn't set up. Off the other scraper. Oh, okay. Because of, you know, a small amount of chocolate on another surface that's cooler will harden and then you're affected, the whole lot's affected. So I did used to use professional things to pour it, but you get more waste because you've got that full of chocolate as well in the end. Uh -huh. So you just eyeball it, you know. Well, you know, I don't, but I do my best. This isn't the most efficient method, but this is, with the time limitation, this is what's working for me. job of filling that quite well but we're going to get this which I heated with the hair dryer and do a scrape over the top an initial scrape I don't want to yep. get it that you don't make a mess on the side but I'm not that good but yeah, you want it. nice and clean this is uh, this is nice and fat this chocolate so the viscosity is good yeah so what I want to do here is I want to scrape this off into this bowl not oh. the bowl And then scrape the sides. Okay. Just get this. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, it's messy, but we try and make it not too messy. And then this is what Lauren's gonna do for the next couple of them. That's just so, so messy today. Which is good. That means it's very pourable, which means the viscosity is good, which means nice and high in fat. Okay, so I don't think we're going to have many air bubbles, but we're going to try and get rid of any air bubbles, which you get more later on when it's harder to pour. And then we're going to give it another scrape. You want to hold it, obviously hold the mold as flat as possible. Yeah, see that I'm not going at that either. Okay, and at that point, you know, I clean off the sides a bit, but it's going to go into the freezer. But only 10 minutes. If we leave it in there, we've got an issue with the moisture. Okay, so I'm going to pour and do the first scrape and then pass to you, okay? Yes. Obviously, I wore something that's not my favorite outfit so that, you know, when I it's get chocolate. definitely her favorite. <laughs> She's in complete denial. I got it for a dollar seventy-five at the Ropa Americana here, which is like the Goodwill of Costa Rica. Which so is let me cheaper than that. an apron, so. Oh basic. yeah, see, look, I already got chocolate on myself. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. For so again, our um, temperature might have dropped a little bit on this. I'm sure it's fine. It's actually very warm in here anyway, but just to get a good practice to remember that. Remind yourself not to put your fingers inside the molds once they've been buffed. Oops, messy. We'll get fingerprints yeah. on your bars. You don't want fingerprints or smudges on your bars. Your molds to be nice and clean and well buffed. So I was saying buff with them. I buff with microfiber, I clean with a lens cloth and vodka. I don't use um, I don't use soap on my molds, and I never use spatulas that I have used for onions or garlic or, in fact, everything I use for chocolate is just used for chocolate or inclusions, which are things you put on chocolate. Mm -hmm. So 
so I bang now. Um, yeah, you can see an initial bang. Just make sure, at this point, you just want to make sure the mold is filled. Keep going. Scrape it now? Um, yep, you can do. Actually, let me do the initial scrape. Okay. I'm not ready for scraping yet, apparently. She's ready, but we do the initial scrape. The second scrape, she can do. I'm ready for a second scrape. She's a second scraper, second rate scraper. <laughs> Is this comedy or cooking? <laughs> oh, look. Sometimes you can get it where it doesn't fall at all. This stuff's messy, obviously. Don't ever expect to have any clean dish cloths and nothing, nothing in the house that doesn't have a chocolate stain on, whether it's washed or not. Okay, now you're gonna do the, now I gotta bang again. Bang. My niece just had to have to do things You wanna do it way. much faster oh. and small and then like, okay, I'm gonna just take Can you see those bubbles now? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Okay. Okay. We need this. This all has to happen super quick. Okay. Oh, fine, okay. Yeah. okay. This doesn't have many bubbles in. Okay. Put, will you put this in the? In Don't we have the to scrape again? No. No. Okay. Okay, next one. Here we go. Busting this out. Alright, well, maybe I'll get to scrape this time. We'll keep the video. Do you video want to try on. pouring? Or are you not ready for that yet? I don't I know. Feel. Am I ready? Well, you said you've got finesse. I lack finesse. Okay, but. But I make up. I make up. What well, I lack in finesse, I make up for in character. Uh, I would personally find a ladle that was just the right size to fill the thing. I have. No. I'm well, not, not quite gonna... the right size, but because it, everything sticks to everything. We have ladles. We can try a ladle next time. We have, uh... I don't want to waste any. That's yeah, the problem. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I can take over the feeling stressed about it. Well, I don't want to yeah. make a mess. Can I go up and down a bit? So, okay, show sure, no. me. Okay. Let's go. Obviously not enough in there, but I think too much is in there. That's okay. So one thing that I can do as well, you can kind of gauge it with um, moving it down. Mm -hmm. But when you're pouring out the bowl, um, you want to, if you just do it in the middle, you can't really see how much you're getting. So if you try and do it like up and down, uh -huh. but it's, you know, to be honest, you might prefer, as I said, I've got a squirty bottle like this. Yeah that I use for oh, chocolate. Yeah, but I see you're saying then too much is gonna be wasted inside the mm -hmm. bottle. And also when I'm doing it on my own, I just don't have time to like fill things. Yeah. But it's different if there's two of us. But I think a ladle we've got, would We've got the ladle right next to us right now, and we'll do the next round with the ladle, okay? I heated the ladle, ladle just now. So okay. we're gonna try the next so round with I, the ladle. Am I gonna tap? Um, tap it so it's full. I'm allowed to scrape. Okay, over the bowl, right bowl, remember? And not onto that. Okay. Okay. Okay, I know. Apparently Hold I'm not gonna. It's really, it's well, I can't do it very well myself. One second, that's kind of emptied that one out a bit too much. And that. This has gone a little too, we need to fill that one up a uh -oh. bit more. Okay. Maybe if she yelled at me more, it'd be better. I'm supposed to yell like I was taught when I did it. Okay, do you want to bang that a bit? That's enough. So when you do it, um, let me, one, one tip with banging as well I'm going to show you is 
that when you do it um, over the edge like this, yeah. you get a little bit more, you know, okay. friction in there. Okay. Do you want to put that in the? You want to let me put it in freeze. Your hands are too dirty, and then we're going to heat the rest of the mold, and then leave the label that time. Okay. So you get the idea. Now we're going to fill the rest. So since we're in Costa Rica and it's humid here, we have to bring the chocolate to the air-conditioned bedroom. It's very, very, uh, yay, look at them, they're beautiful. Look how pretty with the little cacao pattern on there. See that? Gorgeous. I'm gonna leave them here for at least an hour to cool down and not be humid.